following up on his quick hit on the clinical presentation of ovarian torsion and how variable it can be. And in this quick hit, he's going to talk about the test characteristics of imaging for ovarian torsion. How many times have you cared for a female patient with lower quadrant abdominal pain and a negative CT? What should you do? Get an ultrasound? And what about the reliability of ultrasound for the diagnosis of ovarian torsion? There are a bunch of questions we face almost every shift, especially in female patients with abdominal pain. Rather than focus on the problems with history and exam in patients with suspected ovarian torsion, this time I'm going to look at imaging in the patient with suspected torsion. Let's start with ultrasound. The first problem is that ultrasound for diagnosis of ovarian torsion is not 100% reliable. Even more of a problem is the thought that normal arterial blood flow on Doppler can rule out torsion. Unfortunately, it just isn't that easy. Yes, transvaginal ultrasound is the initial test of choice if torsion is number one on your differential. But ultrasound is limited by operator variability and it doesn't look for other causes of abdominal pain. Now with ovarian torsion, lymphatic and venous obstruction occur first, followed later by arterial obstruction. Patients with intermittent torsion may have completely normal venous and arterial flow on ultrasound. So while many think Doppler flow can be used to exclude ovarian torsion, don't rely on it. Doppler findings can vary widely and can include things like decreased venous blood flow, which is a more common finding, absent arterial flow, reversed or absent vascular flow on Doppler, and abnormal grayscale appearance of the ovaries. However, normal arterial and venous flow may be found on ultrasound in up to one-third of patients with true torsion at the time of surgery, and arterial flow is normal in up to two-thirds of patients. Your first takeaway is that you can't rely on normal Doppler flow to rule out torsion. If the ultrasound only mentions arterial flow, you have to dig deeper. What else can you use to diagnose torsion on ultrasound? The majority of cases of torsion occur in patients with abnormal ovaries. Combined ultrasound findings is probably more helpful. Rather than just focusing on blood flow, the ovary size and position are important things to look at. An ovary pushed towards the midline, an ovary more than 4 centimeters in size, and pelvic free fluid are also ultrasound findings that suggest torsion. One study from 2008 evaluated ultrasound findings in torsion. This study found that up to 54% of patients had normal arterial flow, but up to 66% had no venous flow. All patients had abnormal ovaries based on size, grayscale, or the presence of a mass. Another study from 2011 found that looking for abnormal arterial or venous blood flow the presence of free fluid on ultrasound, or increased size of the ovary increase the reliability of ultrasound. In fact, an ovary over 4 cm in size is one of the most common findings on ultrasound. Your second takeaway is that an enlarged ovary or change in ovary appearance should be discussed with a specialist, even if vascular flow on ultrasound is normal. Next, what about CT in the female patient with lower quadrant pain? CT with IV contrast can suggest torsion. Similar to ultrasound, the most common finding is an enlarged ovary. If this is found on CT and no other pathology is present, move to ultrasound. Other CT findings that suggest torsion include an underlying ovarian lesion, lack of ovary enhancement with IV contrast, inflammatory stranding around the ovary, pelvic free fluid surrounding the ovary, and twisting of the vascular pedicle. A twisted pedicle is known as a twisted whirlpool sign. While the whirlpool sign is essentially pathognomonic for torsion, it's rare. One study from 2009 evaluated imaging in ovarian torsion and found that all patients with OR-confirmed torsion had some form of abnormality on CT, most commonly an increased size of the ovary. No patients with torsion had a completely normal abdominal pelvis CT. Another study found that all patients with ovarian torsion had an enlarged ovary with smooth borders and uterine deviation on CT. For your third takeaway, if your patient has a completely normal CT, meaning normal ovarian size, no stranding, no twisting of the vascular pedicle, 
and no uterine deviation, ovarian torsion is not likely. Ultrasound in this situation will probably not help. On the other hand, if you find an abnormality of CT in the pelvis, go ahead with the ultrasounds. In summary, if you're considering torsion in the female with lower quadrant abdominal pain, don't rely on a normal Doppler to rule out torsion. Instead, look for an enlarged ovary, free fluid, abnormal ovarian appearance, or decreased venous flow. The presence of one of these findings may be due to torsion and you should speak with the OBGYN. CT can also suggest torsion, especially with a twisted vascular pedicle. Finally, a completely normal abdominal pelvis CT can likely exclude the diagnosis of ovarian torsion.